Hello, dear friends. It's Poet WP here again. Today is a special kind of video. I've been thinking about this video for a long time. Thinking, here I go swinging again, I'm sorry. Thinking, uh, you know, should I do it, should I not do it? But you know what? I decided, yeah, let's do it. Because it's important in life to pay homage to your heroes. And uh, right up there with Roger Waters and in terms of like rock stars and all that. Right up there with like, you know, Roger Waters and Tool. Rage Against the Machine. You know. Uh, of course, Pink Floyd and Roger Waters. And I could I could rattle off names of bands forever. But, uh, and, you know, Led Zeppelin. Uh, anyway, you, you guys know who's awesome. But Nine Inch Nails is... Probably my top three favorite bands of all time. Nice Nails always really spoke to me. Trent always sounded like a sane man crying out in a mad world to me. Oh yeah, what made me think of this? Tonight I'm enjoying a nice little glass of absinthe. The Green Fairy. La Fée tea. That's, one of, that's what the Perfect Drug song is about. Nine Inch Nails song, Perfect Drug. I'm an absinthe connoisseur. You know, I don't overindulge. And I know a lot of you uh, fellow connoisseurs are going to be like, <gasps> How dare you, sir, imbibe of the sacred green fairy with common ice and a silly straw? What are you doing? Well, chill out, man. That's how I roll. I like a lot of ice in my absinthe. I like one part absinthe, two sugar cubes, and four parts water, and a lot of ice. <laughs> That's how I take it. So, you know, teach their own. Sorry, I'm swaying again. So yeah, Trent Reznor, here's to you, brother. I owe you one, big time. Just for your art, your music, for real. It made all the difference. You helped me. And I had the honor and great privilege by just some luck of fate. This was like a gift from the gods to me, in a way, to me. I mean, not literally, but just, you know, I'm not delusional. But, you know, it was just an amazing coincidence that I had. The first time I went to New York City. Story time, kids. The first time I went to New York City. Uh, hell, what time? I don't remember what year it was. I can't remember time very well, dates. Um, but um, I was 19 years old, and I was staying there for a month. And I, I met this friend of a friend, right? Shout out to Ken out on Park Place, brother. I miss you. Uh, and he let me... Uh, uh, he became one of my best friends and mentors, this guy. Uh, uh, he, rent, he rented a room to me in his uh, brownstone in the top floor, and he lived on the middle floor, and his grandma lived on the bottom floor. And we used to have a lot of fun. He was, he was a fun guy to hang out with, super smart. Anyway, I'm getting off on another tangent. So while I'm on my first trip to New York, uh, I'm just getting settled in, right? I've been there maybe two weeks. I go to, I've been hanging out, I'm hanging out at 14th Street, right? Get off Union Square every day and just explore, right? Uh, I got my poetry. I got my fedora. I got my trench coat. I got my tuxedo pants, my tuxedo jacket uh, that I got from Goodwill. And I'm wearing, this is what I wore to the, the, the event. I met Trent Reznor. It was at the signing he did. I don't know if he ever did more than one. But I was at the one he did. If He may have done another one. I don't know. But, uh. Anyway, yeah, I'm wandering around, and I happen to come across a flyer. I wasn't dressed in that that day. I was. This is what I was dressed in the next day. Anyway, I come across a flyer. This flyer. Virgin Megastore Times Square, which is not even there anymore. Nine Inch Nails live in person to celebrate the release of their first live CD, DVD, and VHS, which is not a thing anymore. <coughs> Excuse me, cough. Nine Inch Nails live. And all that could have been. That was the release of their new bit, new record. January, Tuesday, January 22nd at 5 p.m. Virgin Megastore Times Square. Space is limited. All right. I see this flyer. Now, I saw this on January, like the day before, 21st. I just saw a flyer, right? I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And so I go into Virgin Megastore. I go to the counter, I was like, what's up with Nine Inch Nails being here tomorrow? Like, is there passes? Whatever. 
And she was like, no, I'm sorry, sir. Those sold out long ago. <laughs> and I was like, damn it. But I, was, I did not give up hope. I was not, did not give up hope. So I came down there the next day, right? And I went and I, I got, I looked at the same money I had. And I took about more money than I should. And I was like, I'm going to make this shit happen. <laughs> I'm going to get to shake my hero's hand. I'm not going to pass this up. I'm not going to let a little thing like a sell out of passes stop me. So anyway, <laughs> don't worry. I didn't do anything stupid or illegal. So I go grab as much money as I can spare, right? So I'm like, fuck, I can part with 80 bucks and still have enough to buy an album to get autographed or two. I was going to buy the deluxe version. It has like a DVD and the thing. But I'll get to that in a minute. So then I got the money together and I was like, okay, so I got, I can do, I can part with 80 bucks, 80 bucks. So let's see what I can do. So I go down there in Virgin Mega Store, 14th Street, Union Square. And <clears throat> there's the line to meet Nine Inch Nails. And so I just start at the front of the line and I go down the line, each person. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, sir. Trent Reznor is one of my absolute heroes, and uh, it would be a dream come true if I could meet him. So I was wondering, would you sell me your pass for $80 in cash? Here's the money right here. Well, I got down to, about, I went down to about 20 people, right? 20 people down the line or so. It was this woman. She was like, you know what? I'm not a super fan like that, uh, and I just didn't have anything else to do today. So you know what? You got it, my friend. I was like, yes, awesome. And I paid the lady 80 bucks. And she gave me her pass. It did have a little ball chain. Anyway, see, I got it framed in this little shadow box deal here. Uh, this is the other album. Anyway, I'll get to that in a minute. So, so I'm like, yes, I'm in. I'm in. This is awesome. I was so excited, right? I'm standing in line. You know, I waited about an hour and a half, whatever. It didn't mean shit to me. I could have waited for five days. I just, shit, I'd wait for a month to shake Trent Reznor's hand. Uh, but, uh, and it's not crazy like that. I'm just a, I'm just a fanboy. I'm just a super fanboy. He helped me through some dark times in my life with his music. And a little more absinthe there. Anyway, yeah, so so I'm in line. And it's pretty cool. It's a chill time, even like the wait, you know, there's like a this chick behind me that's like she's kind of like a casual fan and she's chatting it up, you know, and that's cool. And, and then and there's a dude in front of me. He's like this kind of deep introvert looking dude looking down, you know, but real chill kind of energy, you know? So we just all just sit there and have little conversations. I was getting in debates with the, uh, little, the introvert chill dude in front of me about, uh, what does this mean? What did Trip mean when he's saying this? Or like, how does that, what did you think of when he that? Or, you know, that kind of thing, like, you know, fanboys do. And, um, you know, it was a fun little time. I didn't even mind the wait. I was so excited. You know, like I said, then uh, I got up there, right? And the whole time in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, what am I going to say to Trent Reznor? I'll just have like a moment. I'll just say whatever. What am I going to say to him? Uh, it's like, you know, you hand him the CD and Trent signs it. And then his two bandmates signed it. I'm sorry, brothers. Like Danny, maybe? I can't remember. I'm sorry. I should have looked up your names. I feel like I'm slacking. Please excuse me. <clears throat> anyway. So, uh. So I'm like, well, he's a hero, right? He gets fanboy geeking out, whatever, all the time, right? I was like, let's just come at him with some sincerity, right? You know, he's one of your heroes. You want to say thank you. And I said, but that's simple, right? Maybe you should, in a brief sentence, articulate why you want to say thank you, right? So I was like, all right, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. So I did that. And uh, so I got up to the line, you know. And uh, they uh, handed my CD, and they handed it to the Trent and his band, these two fellas. I'm sorry, I can't remember your names, and uh, I can't make it out either. I'm sorry. I should have looked it up. Anyway. So um, when they handed it to Trent to sign my CD, oh, um, I'll fill you in on a little bit in another story, part of that in a minute. Um, and this is where I'm wearing, this is where I'm wearing, a, I was hipster, hipster chic before hipster chic was a thing. Uh, I was just kind of following my own thing, you know, kind of emerging styles. What I was wearing, I knew Trent loved The Wall and Pink Floyd. I, the Wall is my favorite album of all time, period, bar none, hands down. 
never will be any other better album than The Wall and, and uh, Gabriel Samadhi's book. But, uh, but then again, Pink Floyd is like my number one favorite band. Nine Inch Nails, second. But anyway, so I, what I say to Trent Reznor? I said, uh, as he's signing my CD, after he signed my CD, I said, um, I just want to say that the music and the art that you made helped me in my life when absolutely nothing else would. And for that, I just want to say thank you. And I, I offered him my hand, and I said, and I, I said my name. I said my name is so and so, uh, and and I said it's an honor to meet you. And he shook my hand, and he looked surprised. He looked, we looked. I looked him in the eyes. We looked each other in the eyes for a moment as we shook hands, and he looked very surprised to to hear such a statement of sincerity all all so suddenly. You know, I don't know. Maybe it was a little weird. I don't know. I was trying not to be weird. I was trying to be genuine and sincere, you know, which hopefully it came off as that. I was 19 years old, you know, sitting there with a fedora, with a tool. I should have brought the, full, I had like a fedora with a tool eye thing from the Lateralis album and like a colorful parrot feather coming out of the thing. With I was wearing a uh, vintage 80s tuxedo jacket I got from Goodwill and tuxedo pants with stripes. And I had a, uh, I had a Pink Floyd The Wall t-shirt on. That I wore especially because I thought maybe he would dig it, right? It was the old Ralph Steadman art from the wall of the screaming dude, which is the best version of the wall album art. They should have just stuck with that and quit trying to make things new and improved because it's not. It's newer and shittier. Anyone, if there's going to be a re-release of any of the wall things on VH, or not VHS, on, on DVD, Blu-ray, whatever, uh, go back to the art, Ralph Steadman art of the screaming man because that was the essence of the wall, not this other stupid... And not the modified version, the original Stedman version that was on the VHS box of the original Wall. Copy of the Wall. That art. Because that art is perfect for the Wall. Anyway, I am talking about Pink Floyd and the Wall. So anyway, that's what I said that to Trent. And, uh, man, it was, for me, that was one of the best moments of my life. Trent, it was just a fleeting, brief moment. That's fine. It, for me, it was like meeting Gandhi or something. It really was. It was amazing. It was one of the happiest memories of my life. I got to meet one of my all-time top heroes in life. I got to shake the man's hand and express my gratitude. Now you may say, "Geez, Moran, you sure you sure do dig this guy's th- these guy's stuff. What's the big deal? Why? What is it that he did that appeals to you so much?" Well, at this point, he had done, uh, you know, let's see, he had done Pretty Hate Machine, and then he had done a bunch of EPs and singles off that album, as he does with most of his albums. Then he went to, um, why does his name elude me all of a sudden? Burn, Wish, what the hell is the name? Anyway. The album was burned. Why is that name not coming to my mind right now? Broken. Broken. He did Broken and he did Fixed. The um, remixed album. And then he did uh, The Downward Spiral. And The Fragile. So this is what he had done up to that point. Right? And, uh, Originally, I immersed myself in the downward spiral, and then I further discovered his two previous albums. But some of my favorites that really were more inspirational to me were uh, songs like "Head Like a Hole," "God Money," "I'll Do Anything for You," "God Money," "Just Tell Me What You Want Me To." God and money nail me up against the wall. God and money don't want everything he wants at all. No, you can't take it. No, no, you can't take it. Now you can't take that away from me. Head like a hole, black as your soul. I'd rather die than give you control. Head like a hole, black as your soul. I'd rather die than give you control. 
bow down before the one you serve. You're going to get what you deserve. Bow down before the one you serve. You're going to get what you deserve. God, money's not looking for the cure. God, money's not concerned about the sick among the pure. God, money, let's go dancing on the backs of the bruised. Yeah, God, money's not one to choose. No, you can't take it. No, you can't take it. No, you can't take that away from me. Head like a hole, black as your soul. I'd rather die than give you control. Head like a hoe, black as your soul. I'd rather die, give you control. Bow down before the one you serve. You're going to get what you deserve. You know who you are. <laughs> yeah, man, that's badass, right? I love singing that on karaoke. Love it, love it, love it. Live for it. <coughs> Sorry about the cough. Karaoke gives you the chance to be a rock star with all the bullshit. This is the essence of the glory of entertaining people. Even if you suck, man, if you have good passion with it, they're drunk, they don't care. They dig it. Unless they hate the message of the song. <laughs> anyway, or I mean, they usually don't understand it anyway. But, um, yeah. I mean, that's classic, man. That'll go down in history. It's fucking... Stand the test of time. Other tracks on this, I mean, this all of this stuff, really. But other tracks that really, really helped me. Something I can never have. And I'm not going to sing this one because I'll probably start fucking crying or something. This helped me through my unrequited love situation that I struggled with for five years and um, drugged me through the pits of hell like fucking Dante. Yeah, uh, something I can never have. That helped me a lot. Also, in the unrequited love situation, this song helped me a lot. Ring Finger. I'm not going to sing it either because I'll probably cry. <laughs> but, uh... <clears throat> other... Other, uh... Big, big things that helped me with the Nine Inch Nails. You get into the downward spiral, right? This is a vinyl. I got it on CD as well. But some albums just go so good, you just got to buy a vinyl version of it, you know? It's all that purest hipster bullshit, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Now, this whole album is a magnum opus of brilliance, if you ask me. But a dark one, albeit. Trent has a minimalist style. He really embraced hardcore with this album. And he kind of moved forward in that style to a large degree for um, most of his work. At least I would say. Now, let's see. See this art? See, look at that. Whoa. So contextualized. So, uh, that's not the right word. So, so much texture. Right? There's a lot of mediums going on here. There's paint, there's feathers. God knows what else. It looks like kind of like David Lynch's art, it reminds me. David Lynch used to do organic art that would like he would make out of organic shit and it would rot away as it just like hung there and shit. Which is just nuts. But God bless David Lynch. He is a, a genius. <laughs> as Trent would tell you. I'm a big David Lynch fan. I also Anyway, I don't want to get rambling about some other subject. Stay on subject. Yeah, the, the ones that helped me the most. Mr. Self-Destruct. Now, this song helped me because this song reminded me of the things that not to. This is like, to me, like what controls society. This dark shadow side ego bullshit here. This is what this is about to me. And it means to me. And this helped me get through things in life that are like, whenever you're feeling angry, you're like, you know, that's your Mr. Self-Destruct voice. I am the voice inside your head, and I control you. I am the lover in your bed, and I control you. I am the sex that you provide, and I control you. I am the hate you try to hide, and I control you. I take you where you want to go. I give you all you need to know. I drag you down. I use you up, Mr. Self-Destruct. I speak religion's message clear, and I control you. I am denial, guilt, and fear, and I control you. I am the prayers of the naive, and I control you. I am the lie that you believe, and I control you. 
I take you where you want to go. I give you all you need to know. I drag you up. I use you. I drag you down. I use you up. I, I am Mr. Self Destruct. I am the needle in your vein, and I control you. I am the high you can't sustain, and I control you. I am the pusher of the whore, and I control you. I am the needing you for more. I am the need you have for more, and I control you. I am the bullet in the gun, and I control you. I am the truth of, from which you run, and I control you. I am the silencing machine, and I control you. I am the end of all your dreams, and I control you. I take you where you want to go. I give you all you need to know. I drag you down. I use you up, Mr. Self-Destruct. Yeah, that's some powerful shit. So yeah, that helped me deal with the bullshit of the world and like dealing with the nature of like in an insane world, the sane man seems off. <laughs> Another one I liked, Piggy. Well, these really pertinent for the times too, this song. Hey pig, yeah you. Hey pig, piggy pig, pig pig, all of my fears came true. Back in black and blue and broken bones, you left me here, I'm all alone. My little piggy needed something new. Nothing can stop me now, cause I don't care anymore. Nothing can stop me now, I just don't care. Hey pig, nothing turned out the way I planned. Hey pig, there's a lot of things I hope you could help me understand. What am I supposed to do? Lost my shit because of you. Nothing can stop me now, cause I don't care anymore. Nothing can stop me now, I just don't care. Nothing can stop me now, you don't need me anymore. <laughs> then there's the March of the Pigs, also. Couldn't be more pertinent for our times. They're on the march. Step right up. Crawl right up on your knees. Please, greed, feed. No time to hesitate. I want a little bit. I want a piece of it. I think he's losing it. I want to watch it come down. Don't like the look of it. Don't like the taste of it. Don't like the smell of it. I want to watch it come down. All the pigs are all lined up. I give you all that you want. Take the skin and peel it back. Doesn't it make that feel better? Doesn't that make you feel better? My bad. Shove it up inside. Surprise. Lies. Stains like blood on your teeth. Bite. Chew. Suck away the tender parts. I want to break it up. I want to smash it up. I want to fuck it up. I want to watch it come down. Maybe afraid of it. Maybe afraid of it. Let's discreet. It's losing. Oh, I don't know this one part. I haven't read it in a while. Maybe afraid of it. Let's discredit it. Let's pick away at it. I want to watch it come down. Doesn't it make you feel better? The pigs have won tonight. Now they can all sleep soundly and everything is all right. And then there's the Ruiner. I'm not going to do all the songs. I'm just going to do a few. If you don't want to watch, you could cut off. Close. Well, that's closer. Where's the Ruiner? Becoming Ruiner. There it is. You had all of them inside you, didn't you? You believed in all your lies, didn't you? The Ruiner's got a lot to prove. He's got nothing to lose. And now he's made you believe the Ruiner's your only friend. Well, he's the living end to the cattle he deceives. The raping of the innocent. You know the Ruiner ruins everything he sees, Trump. Now... The only pure thing left in my fucking world is wearing your disease. <laughs> How did you get so big? How did you get so strong? How did you get so hard? How did you get so long? You had to give them all a sign, didn't you? You had to covet what was mine, didn't you? The Ruiner's a collector. He's an infector serving his shit to his flies. Maybe there will come a day when those that you keep blind will suddenly realize. Maybe it's a part of me you took to a place I hoped I, it would never go. And maybe that fucked me up much more than you'll ever know. How'd you get so big? How'd you get so strong? How'd you get so hard? How'd you get so long? What you gave it to me... My perfect ring of scars. You know I can see what you really are. 
You didn't hurt me. Nothing can hurt me. You didn't hurt me. Nothing can stop me now. <laughs> you can see, obviously I said Trump. This isn't about Trump. It's just that Trent sings about characteristics in the human nature that are the darkest, most depraved, like, terrible things. You know, it's like a warning. It's all warning, right? At least it is to me. And some of it is is, is more deep than that, but a lot of it is a warning. And there's another one of my favorites. One more from this album. The Becoming. I beat my, my machine. You know, there's the double entendre metaphor. Fine. I beat my machine. It's a part of me. It's inside of me. I'm stuck in this dream. It's changing me. I am becoming the me that you know had some second thoughts. He's covered with scabs. He is broken and sore. The me that you know doesn't come around much. That part of me isn't here anymore. All pain disappears. It is the nature of my circuitry. Drowns out all I hear. There's no escape from this. My new consciousness. The me that you know used to have feelings, but the blood has stopped pumping and it is left to decay. The me that you know is now made up of wires, and even when I'm right with you, I'm so far away. I could try to get away, but I've strapped myself in. I could try to scratch away the sound in my ears. I can see it's killing me, all of my bad parts. I don't want to listen, but it's all too clear. Hiding backwards inside of me, I feel so unafraid. Any hold a little tighter, I might just slip away. I won't give up, it wants me dead, and goddamn this noise inside my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's helped a lot of people who've struggled with uh, negative feelings through some shit. It was the whole reason the man wrote it. Obviously. Help himself as well, you know. So, yeah, as this video just drones on endlessly. You got to pay homage to your heroes, kids. Take it from a guy who was the last wave of the millennials. That's me. <laughs> anyway, there's a part of my story I will come back to. But other and the fragile, this is another thing. One more thing, two more things, maybe. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do that differently. The fragile. Now the fragile was once again another magnum opus. And there's a lot can be said about that album. And I won't go into an hour long discourse about it or anything. But I, what I will, uh, I picked out a couple songs. Well, actually two. One is just a mantra. No, you don't. Is the song that I think is very, very pertinent from the fragile right now <clears throat> for the time we live in. Sorry, I'm probably moving all over the place. Okay. Now, I revisited this fragile. Every so often I'll you know, listen to the fragile. Um... As you get older and time changes and things change, you, you learn more things from old music and art and stuff. That you didn't really think of, you know, uh, when you initially heard it. And this was the case when I revisited The Fragile a few days ago and listened to the whole album again. It's upside down. <clears throat> the song No You Don't really spoke to me. There we go. Focus. Smiling in their faces while filling up the hole. So many dirty little places and your filthy little worn out broken down see-through soul. Baby's got a problem. Try so hard to hide. Gotta keep it on the surface because everything else is dead on the other side. Teeth in the necks of everyone you know. You can keep on sucking till the blood won't flow. When it starts to hurt, it only helps it grow. Talking, taking all you need, but not this time. No, you don't. And just for the record, just so you know... 
I did not believe you could sink so low. You think that you can beat them. I know that you won't. You think you have everything. But no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You get the idea. I'm not going to sing it four times. Anyway, yeah. Wait, oh, wait, one more. This is not even a song. This is just like a... This isn't even in the thing. Like, this is like a... Maybe there's words, but it's not in English. Maybe they're saying this in another... I think it sounds like French. I'm not, I can't remember. Anyway, this is Lamir. I used to use this as a meditation mantra. This right here. Lamir. I for real did. During my meditation, where I do sitting meditation, where I just sit, like Zazen meditation, but like with guided meditation. <sighs> Lamir. And when the day arrives, I'll become the sky, and I'll become the sea, and the sea will come to kiss me, for I am going home. Nothing can stop me now. I used to repeat that to myself over and over while I was meditating when I was around the time of this album, when I was young. Younger. When I was a young lad. Of what, 20s? I don't know, 19? 19? 20? Yeah, I guess it's 19, whatever, 19. But, uh, yeah, there's my story. And a long ass delve into what Nine Inch Nails songs were most inspiring to me at that point, you know, like from his body of work. Uh, yeah, so yeah, hope you, uh, any of you, uh, ultra fanboys kind of dig this video, you know, or fangirls, fanboys, fan people. <laughs> um, you know, you can dig it. It's not, not, we don't always get to meet our heroes, but I got to meet this one. It was pretty fucking sweet. All right. Catch you next time. I'll bring, bring you some more poetry. Later, gang.